Hello, hello. I have arrived. <clears throat> oh, intro. You know, I never, I never think to read my intro again. <laughs> Let's see. So, <laughs> my apologies. Intro. Let me just check the text on that real quick. Uh, where did I put that file? There we go. It's the same thing every time. I don't know why I keep forgetting it. I really wish you didn't do that. Windows? Hmm. Oops. Alright. <laughs> so. I guess the intro doesn't matter too much because this is a test stream, in theory. Anyway, there's not going to be all that much testing because I got a little bit distracted and I ended up doing a lot of the testing uh, over the period of time that I would be do have been doing the stream. Uh, more specifically, it is currently a little after 9.30. Uh, I intended to begin at about 8.30, but like I said, I got distracted by testing before starting the test stream in which one is supposed to test things. So uh, that didn't quite happen as planned. So yeah, anyway, it's me. I'm here. And there's no chefs today. That's been a that's a rare thing. So yeah. So, I think first I will go over some of the Yeah, first I'll go over updates a little bit. Then I will show some of the things that I've been working on a little bit. And I don't have a specific, you know, target for how long this is going to be. So we'll just sort of go until I feel that I am satisfied. So yeah, so first of all, in a while, <laughs> let's see, when was the last time I did a solo stream? I do not know. Let's see if I can, if that is somewhere within easy reach, that information. It should be in the description of whatever my last YouTube video was of a solo stream. But yes. Also, I have a YouTube channel. Go follow that if you haven't already, maybe. Okay, so. Uh, March 7th. So yeah, so that would have been... Eh, I guess it wasn't that long ago. I was expecting it to have been... Well, no, that was that was like... I got March and May confused. <laughs> I got March and May confused, and I thought that that was last month. But no, that was uh, about three months ago. So yeah, so it's been a while since I've streamed on my own. I hope to be streaming on my own a little bit more often going forward. But yeah. So, let's see. Okay. So, go over the business, I suppose. Go over the plans. So, yeah. Uh, I spoke about this in the last uh, of uh, Valhalla stream with chefs, but the game schedule is going to change up a little bit. Yeah. Previously, I had been playing mostly... Mostly Tales of Rise, and then playing a little bit of Ark Knights on the side. Currently, the plan now is I'm going to be playing mostly Ark Knights with a little bit of Tales on the, of Arise on the side. So yes. So, Ark Knights. I don't know precisely what I'm going to do with my schedule just yet. Still working out the details on that. For one thing, my work schedule is going to be changing pretty soon. And for another, I'm actually going to be out of town in these uh, for a couple of weeks in a couple of weeks yeah so starting yeah starting on the yeah that would be the well i don't know i'll be out of town starting the 18th basically i was going to try to give the number of the week of the but there's no need <laughs> anyway so i will be out of town i will be out of the street in fact so i'll be very far away and very unable to stream, most likely. If I do do any streaming, you know, I'm not even going to bring that up because it's almost certainly not going to happen. But yes, so, let's see. So, mostly Arc Knights going forward. I want to focus on that because I want to make sure that we have achieved a pretty reasonable amount of story progress by the time that we, the uh, Monster Hunter, Arc Knights collab comes out because I want to be able to participate in that. But yes, so that is the plan with Arc Knights. 
once again, Tales of Arise is on the back burner. I don't intend to not play it. I don't intend to give it up, uh, just like I did not intend to give up uh, Love Live Alive, which uh, has not been played in a much, much longer time. Much, much longer time. But I'll get back to that at some point also. But yes. So, like I said, I don't know what the schedule is going to be for, I suppose, the upcoming week, necessarily. Most likely, next Thursday, we will be resuming the VA11 Hall A Cyberpunk Bartender Action collab with Sheffy Sheps. This week, she was uh, unable to unable to participate in it due to some personal events. Yeah, I don't know if they've made that information public, so I'm not going to share too much of it. But yeah, anyway. So that is why I am on my own today, basically. But yeah. So, Arknights going to be picking up Tales of Arise as, as it is convenient. <laughs> as it is convenient. But the primary focus is going to be on Arknights for the time being, for the foreseeable future. Yeah, other than that, um, yeah, I guess I'll talk a little bit about the time that I've been taking off. You know, I haven't been taking time entirely off due to, you know, doing the collab still. But I've been streaming a lot less than usual and picking up other other things. So, but yeah, so like I said, my work's been different. Lots of, uh, I don't know, I guess not a whole lot has changed in the schedule recently, but I'm doing more work, basically. We are in a busier time currently, and the time leading up to this busy time was also busy because we had to get pre prepared for being busy. But yeah, it's quite hot now, right? Also, the summer has crept up upon us, and I am deeply, deeply troubled by it. I guess that's not relevant to the stream, though, so <laughs> we'll move on. Anyway, so. Yeah, break. I was talking about my break. So, break's been fine. No particular issues. I've been picking up exercising. I was, I was going to say exercising more, but exercising in general. I've been exercising in general. Uh, I've been doing a little bit more art practice recently. You know, a lot of things... Yeah, I, you know, I wanted to do art. That was one of the art on stream art for the stream, you know. I made my model and all that. I made the background and the foreground here. Yeah, almost every asset on, that you see on the stream in any capacity, or even the ones that you hear, because I also did the background music. Uh, everything you see except for uh, Akari here, our little friend, almost all of it was made by me. And it's been a very, very long time since I put in any serious time into doing any art or practicing my art so I've gotten a little bit rusty and I hope to undo some of that I want to get back into doing more art more regularly on or more likely off stream so that I can you know get some things updated around here you know this placeholder background scene that we've been in for since my streaming career started basically yeah, the placeholder placeholders that we use for the prep and the break screen. The the game the game scene is also a placeholder. It's a somewhat more polished placeholder, but it's a placeholder nonetheless. And it's one that we've had for a shorter time, but again, it is still a placeholder. So there's a lot of things that I've meant to update that I've just never taken the time to, and I really really hope to do that soon. I'm not going to make any promises, of course. Once again, there's... Yeah, there's things happening. <laughs> yeah. I don't know any more, more succinct way to put it. I'm not, you know, deeply troubled by anything that is going on in my life currently, so you do not need to worry about that. Uh, Marisako, 2 to N, thank you for the follow. Yeah, I'm not deeply troubled by anything that's going on, you know, so there's no need to worry too much about that. But yeah, just things have been happening. Things have been happening. Things continue to happen. 
I don't think I could put it any more vaguely if I wanted to. But anyway. So, where was I? Okay, so basically all I gave a whole lot of non-information saying that I do not know when things are going to happen, but that they I do intend for them to happen. And that's really all I can say at this particular moment in time. Because yeah, again, I am not fully sure myself. But yeah, I have enjoyed my time off. I have been I am feeling fairly better. I started feeling not good as much. A little, for a little while there, which is why I took so long to get back into into streaming more, streaming on my own, outside of collabs. Yeah, and another thing that I sort of struggled with for a while was, I always had the sense of, oh, I, you know, I don't want to get back to streaming until I have something to show for it. But then I realized, you know, a little while ago, like, I didn't go on break to work on things, I went on break to take a break. And so if I'm stressing myself out over having not done things when I didn't say that I was going to do things, and in fact specifically said that I wasn't going to do things, then, you know, that's a whole lot of needless, needless stress that is going to negatively impact me and my ability to resume streaming. That being said, I have worked on some things. <laughs> specifically within the past uh, week or so, I've been working on a little bit of, a little bit of stuff getting some things updated and changed around a little bit. And I will show that. Or perhaps I won't. Hold on. And there we are. Yes, yeah, so you can see there is darkness now. So yeah, so for a while I was working with an older version of OBS because I had some, uh, some old plugins that weren't updated that didn't update. Um, I don't know, they were updated, but the, the maker of the, the plugin uh, no longer was releasing uh, like installers for it. They were only releasing the source code. So I didn't really want to mess with that. I have compiled things from source code before, but it was a very long and arduous process for me. That, will pro that probably would have been less arduous. No, less arduous now, given that I have a slight amount of knowledge of what is going on. But uh, it wasn't really something I wanted to mess with, especially with things like, you know, plugins for the stream. Because if I, you know, update to a, a more recent version of OBS and I change over to a different plugin and I do something wrong and it doesn't, there's some sort of bug, then, you know, I don't want to troubleshoot that. And yeah. Anyway, all that is to say, you know, I had some some plugins that I didn't really use, but that I didn't want to lose, and I did a little bit of digging and I found a way to replace those a little bit. And I think the end result is a little bit nicer here. You can see this sort of there isn't really any dynamic lighting right now, because I don't have that on, or I don't have a light source on, but I can fix that. And that should be... there we go. So yes. So. There we are. So. Dynamic lighting. The dynamic lighting in this particular instance is coming from the game Deep Rock Galactic. Which we'll be playing a little bit to test it some more. But yeah. So I like the, the results. I like the results a fair amount, I would say. Yeah, there are some some portions of it that aren't quite as good as have been in the past, but overall, I'm pretty pleased with the the new setup. gave me some gave me an opportunity to revise a few things about just sort of my OBS setup in general and all that. Things are just kind of a little bit cleaner overall. So I guess, you know, without further ado, we might as well just go over into the game. Oop. Oop. I also rearranged where my scenes are, so now I don't remember where things are by muscle memory. Oh, nope, that's not it. There we are. So yes. So, if all is going well, we should have audio. 
Rock and stone, yeah. That seems to be audio. Yeah, we definitely have video because I can see it. And yeah, I don't know what else to say, I guess. <laughs> we'll do a little bit of... Actually, you know what? I think I will... No. You know, we're not going to mess with it right now. I don't want to get too caught up in particulars. But yeah, so we're just going to do a little bit of Deep Rock Galactic. Maybe, maybe even just one or two missions. Yeah, just to get a sense of sort of how the, you know, how the dynamic lighting is working. I don't intend to use dynamic lighting too, too much, but it is something that I really do like. It's an effect that I really like a lot. So I would like to be able to, which is, again, the whole reason why I was, like, two, two whole numbered versions behind on OBS for a good long while. Sit. Yes. So let's see. I guess, I guess there's not all that much to say. I already went over the business. I already went over the, the stream itself, the purpose of this, this specific stream. So we might as well just get into the meat and or potatoes and do the mission itself doesn't matter. The mission itself doesn't matter. So I might as well just play something, something very basic because I, again, I mostly just want to test how different lighting conditions and different colors and all that affect the dynamic lighting setup that I have. Again, I did more of this, did more of this than I probably should have off stream, given the fact that the whole purpose of this stream was to adjust these settings. But, you know, in part, it would be. I suppose it's unfair to say that the whole purpose of this stream was to adjust settings. Because it was also in part just in honestly I would say as much so. As much so the purpose of this stream was to What's the word I'm looking for? The purpose of this stream was as much as it was to adjust settings. To just sort of get more used to uh or to get used to again the experience of streaming Oops. streaming uh, going through uh, what's the word I'm looking for whatever it is I'm not doing a great job of it but uh, carrying on my own topics and conversations you know, because I've been streaming for a while also I'd really appreciate it if you would mind that ah okay never mind that is not uh... yeah. I had thought that green also, another troubling thing is the fact that being assailed. Another troubling thing is that the... I'm not super used to this game either, because it's been a while since I played it. But moreover than that, moreover, in addition to that, I should say, the the game... Yeah, the... What's the word I'm looking for? My, uh... Hot keys, there we go. My, my key binding did not uh, transfer over to my new computer. So I've got everything a little bit different from how my muscle memory expects it to work. So everything is just going to be kind of weird beyond just my unfamiliarity with beyond my unfamiliarity with carrying on my own topics, my, my unfamiliarity with streaming on my own again. My unfamiliarity with this game. Hmm. There's a lot going on in this mission, huh? I saw a golden meat bug as well earlier. So yeah. Let's see. Eggs over there. I suppose we might as well just start shooting towards the Crassus detonator. Yeah, one fun thing about the, I guess not about the Crassus detonator specifically, but about the way that this game handles gold and all that. So the Crassus detonator is an enemy that upon being killed generates a large amount of gold by creating a big hole in the world basically. It explodes and the soil that is turned up by its explosion becomes gold, which is pretty nice. Yeah, it creates a big amount of gold, and uh, 
Oh dear. Yeah, there is a big amount of gold you can, you know, get it to make more gold by pulling it into an enclosed space and having it, you know, explode the enclosed area rather than open space. Because again, the entire radius of the explosion, the soil that is upturned by it becomes uh, gold. I'll see if I can get it to explode a little bit. No, it didn't destroy any terrain, but you can see when I break things how the terrain changes a little bit. In fact, I might be able to, yeah, I've got, a, I've got an explosive there. So yeah, you can see this sort of crater type material. So rather than create a crater, the, the Crassus Detonator creates gold. And so I remember, once upon a time, I think it wasn't the first time that I, that I found a Crassus Detonator, but it was one of the first times. Yeah, and so it created its big amount of gold as as like this, but I, uh, I lured it into a tunnel. So not only was there a golden floor, there was also a golden ceiling. And so my little robot friend here, Bosco, I had him painstakingly mine most of the gold. I got the gold that was on the ground because it was within reach. But I had him do a lot of the, the ceiling and just sort of a lot of the gold in general. And normally that's not an issue. But at that time I had a, a buff on. There was a, uh, there is a item that you can purchase in the game with in-game currency, of course. But yeah, that allows you to, uh, or a drink, I should say, because the buffs are in the form of alcoholic drinks, because you are a dwarf, of course. But yeah, so there was a drink, is a drink, called Pots of Gold, which doubles the amount of gold that you get. But it doubles the amount of gold that you get when you, when you specifically dig up the gold with your pickaxe, not with the gold that is dug up by Bosco. So I had Bosco dig up the majority of the gold in this pit, in this pit that I had created, and all the gold that I had him dig was not doubled, was not doubled even though I thought it was. So I ended up with a lot less gold than I was hoping for, but it was still a pretty good amount. So, yeah. so one thing that I've been leaning or that I've been looking for in my new dynamic lighting setup is previously it was pretty common whenever I would face a scene with just sort of a lot of one color like this gold here or my models become super super washed out almost entirely almost entirely just whatever color that was. And so now I've taken some steps to eliminate that. Basically, if the lighting conditions are close enough to white, they begin to... If they are close enough to white, then they will begin to uh, be treated as white for the sake of uh, illumination. Maybe or, uh, I guess, not quite like that. They will begin to be treated as though they weren't there for the sake of... Uh, for the sake of uh, imparting color onto the model. Because, yeah, I suppose the, the way that it works is sort of almost the opposite of light, really. It is more so that the model is light by default, and then color is being added on top of it. Color is being added on top of it. So, when I'm, if I were in a completely white, bright scene, then, then, you know, nothing would be different. But it is these darker areas that are being reflected upon the model rather than light. And so, yeah, again, previously, light, uh, very light conditions would make my model seem very washed out by a very bright light. Now, I didn't want to get rid of that entirely, but I am glad that I toned it down a little bit. I think it looks a lot better now. 
I'm sort of looking back and forth between my monitor with uh, the stream on it and my monitor with the game on it to, to check. There we go. I forgot which button I needed to press to make Bosco respond to me. I've got to say, it's been a very, very long time since I played on a Hazard 1 mission in this game. It is almost bizarre how few uh, arthropods are assailing us at any given time. Yeah, also, another thing. I think I might have done this to some extent previously. But as you can see, if I'm in a very, very dark scene, my eyes remain glowing. And my mouth also, to a lesser extent, but the eyes mostly. Yeah, that was something I always wanted to set up. To, you know, better reflect the reality of this being a glowing display that I'm wearing on my face. But uh, it was a little bit, I think it was a little bit harder to set up before. Or maybe I just wasn't as proficient with OBS and Go, its various various settings. Well, Some of the Bobby. features that are now in this current version of OBS might not have been in that version. But yeah, I and yeah, I should. I feel that I should, uh, for the sake of due diligence. Uh, oh, there it is. I should uh, state that I did not come up with all these settings and options on my own. Or, well, I didn't come up with any of these plugins on my own, obviously. I guess that's not necessarily obvious, but I didn't come up with any of the plugins on my own. And I also uh, didn't come up with any of the plugins on my own, and I didn't uh, yeah, come up with the specific presets that I'm using on my own either. Those I got from some videos that I, some video tutorials that I watched on YouTube. Unfortunately, I didn't think to save them in a way that is convenient for this stream. So I don't have them easily available. But uh, next stream, next stream, and again, I don't know precisely when that will be. It will definitely be next Thursday at the very latest. But hopefully before then, let's just get out of here. We can drill, so we might as well. And if you use the time, Bosco, thank you. So yeah, so once I have that information handy, I will make it available. And in fact, I might just put this in the description of the VOD also. Because yeah, that's an option that's available to me. Yeah, speaking of VODs, I've been behind Give me some on... Light. Let's see. Okay, no, we already got the egg out of there, I think. Yeah, as I was saying, speaking of VODs, we have also been... I have also been. I shouldn't bring you into this. I have been somewhat negligent in uploading them. And uh, that stops now, ideally. I think I'm still one VOD behind. But uh, I've been... Not back into the habit to a certain extent. I don't have no. I do have my flashlight on. I just wasn't looking at anything close enough to illuminate it. To illuminate with it. But yes. So the. I was talking about pause. What was I saying? Oh yes, so I've been uploading VODs, most of the, other than the most recent Valhalla stream, I think all of them are up now. Molly, Molly's not over here. Let's see, can I make this shot? Nope. Not used to using this weapon very much, to be honest. Can I make that shot? Yes, I can. Thanks. Let's go. Thank you. I gotta say, I do like how the the look of the egg casts a very interesting glow. Get back. It's said hmm. much time. I would like that to look that, but I don't know. I don't know that I care to go that far out of my way to get it. Let's see. Speaking of going out of my way, got that terrain scanner. Not that terrain scanner hint. Ah, and yes, it is out of my way. I have to go back down to the bottom of this pit. 
Ah, oh, another Bulu cap. Very nice. I'll have to don't mind that as I pass by. And we're getting close, but not quite there. Yeah, we need to go over this way into a, another deeper portion of the pit. Ah, oh, another Bulu cap. And yeah, we don't need to go out of our way to grab that one that was in an inconvenient space. We can instead grab one that's in a moderately more convenient space. Let's go in my hat as well. And we're getting close, I think. It should be over... Oh, there's another egg over here also, so I did need to go down here. Oh. Oh no. Yeah, okay. So the egg is actually what I was seeing on the map. I forgot that the terrain scanner prize that you get from retrieving those helmets is uh, purple. I suppose the fact that it is egg-shaped should have probably clued me into the fact that what I was looking at was an egg, but, you know, you know how it is. Now, one thing that I have not brought up in a long time, because it's not been relevant for a long time, is the scroll wheel on my mouse is slightly broken, so it'll somewhat randomly go sort of up and down. Is Bosco... Bosco is not doing anything. Bosco, would you be so kind as to mind that, please? Thank you. But yes, the scroll wheel on my mouse is slightly broken. There we are. Load up your guns and sharpen your pickaxes. We got an oh. incoming swarm. Where is that damn? So yes, where was I? Scroll wheel, right. The scroll wheel on my mouse is slightly broken, such that if I try to, say, zoom in on this map, sometimes it'll you'll notice that it doesn't scroll smoothly. It's a big one, team. Even when I am just scrolling in one direction or another. Even if I'm... Oh, right, I forgot that I had the master on. Yeah, even if I am scrolling smoothly in one direction or another, it will often, often not uh, move smoothly in that one direction or the other. Yeah, and I've noticed there's a lot of games that really sort of us work under the assumption that you have a functioning scroll wheel, and uh, a lot of games that don't really don't really offer you good options for rebinding in the event that you do not, or at least not that I have seen. Of course, there are many others that don't assume that you have a, a scroll wheel at all, don't interact with it in any meaningful way, but it is interesting how it's a function that is not really well replicated by just me did the entire cavern get darker for like a brief well, moment. It's almost over. Hmm. Anyway. Yeah, so there's a lot of games that don't rely on it in any real way, but the ones that do rely on it don't often give you a great way of getting around it. Or, you know, again, things like Zoom and all that. I wonder what proportion of mouse users do not use mice that I should say mouse users who play video games, because they are the ones that are relevant to this discussion, given that it is a discussion of mouse, mouse scroll wheels in video games. Alright, another swarm. Thank you, thank you. Molly, you'd be so kind, thank you. Ah, we've got all the eggs, nice. Yes, that was all very nice and quick. Yeah, so I wonder what proportion of mouse users who play video games don't have functioning scroll wheels. I imagine it must not... I'm sure it's not totally insignificant of a number. Alright, how do we get down safely? You don't need to worry too much about getting down safely, I suppose. Bosco still got revives. Yeah, 
I assume that the number must not be statistically statistically insignificant. That is specifically what I mean here, that it is not insignificant. But it's still probably small enough that it is not really planned around. I suppose the obvious option is because it's not a matter of, you know, strictly accessibility. It's just a matter of hardware. Like, they don't necessarily design around the assumption that the, uh, a keyboard user only has half of a keyboard because of, or that half of their keyboard doesn't work. Because in that case, you know, the solution is not... The solution is basically just to get a better keyboard. This, this problem would be easily solved by me just getting a better mouse. Or at least... No, no, I wouldn't say better mouse, because it worked fine for a good couple of years. It's just that it has ceased to work over time. So yeah. So the... it's not necessarily an accessibility problem, I suppose. Hardware. Whether or not your mouse has a scroll wheel. But it is a matter... Yeah, it is. I guess it is an accessibility concern in that not everyone necessarily has the ability to use a scroll wheel uh, all that effectively. At least not while also using other fingers for other things. Oops. Pardon. For instance, someone might only have one finger on the hand they use their mouse in. It. Yeah, interesting things to think about. So yeah, we've been going for a decent amount of time, not a super long time, but I never intended for this to be a super long stream or anything. So I think we probably got some pretty good, pretty good, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Footage of different lighting conditions for me to look over when I'm done here and just sort of get a feel for how how this all looks in motion. I've had a decent opportunity to get used to talking on my own a little bit more. I've been a little bit stuttery and halty, perhaps. Those aren't words, <laughs> but you know. But yeah, I've been stuttering and halting more than I would like, but it's not been too bad. I haven't felt like I've been incapable of doing any of this. So yeah, anyway, I guess that more or less wraps things up. So let's get back to, get back to, uh, or let us go over once again the business before we head out. So yes, so, uh, what, uh, what is there to say? So, the business is always the, the worst and most difficult to, uh, Difficult to... what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not good at talking about it. <laughs> That's the best way I can think to put it. So, anyway. Uh, Arknights, right. So, we're going to be playing primarily Arknights as our main game going forward, not including collabs, of course. Yeah, so once we... I'm going to focus on Arknights. I don't necessarily specifically plan on playing it exclusively, again, other than collabs. I don't necessarily plan on playing Arknights exclusively, but if I have to choose between playing Arknights and playing anything else on any given week, I am choosing Arknights. And I will only stream anything else if I have already done some Arknights, not even collabs again. Because yeah, again, there is the Monster Hunter Arknights collab coming up, the labs are time limited, or the yeah, events in Arknights in general are time limited, and so far the one collab that, uh, you know, the one collab with another sort of uh, game, uh, the Rainbow Six collab, has not come back at any point. It has not been rerun. So I don't want to take the risk that the Monster Hunter collab also will not ever rerun during the time that I am playing Arknights on stream. So yes, yeah. So that is sort of the the uh, that is the impetus behind the specific decision to play Arknights primarily, 
if not exclusively. Yeah. So Arc Knights will be our main focus. I will try to fit in some Tales for Rise here and there as as it becomes convenient. I might I don't know. Again, I might exclusively focus on Arc Knight just for the sake of getting getting to a reasonable amount of completion of it before I step back into Tales of Arise. But again, I will need to get to to a place where my streaming schedule is a little bit more set in stone before I can say anything certain with certainty. Yeah, so again, Arc Knight is the main priority. Tales of Arise is going to be a secondary thing. I do hope to get back to playing Live Alive in the not too distant future. I also want to play Etrian Odyssey. <laughs> this is not something that I've spoken about very much before, but the Etrian Odyssey series is one that I'm quite fond of, and they recently did a HD re-release of the the DS Etrian Odysseys on Steam and also on Switch. I have it on Steam, so that is the one that is relevant to me. Yeah, they recently did an did an HD re-release of it, and I am so excited about that, and I am so sad that I do not uh, have a great opportunity to play it on stream at this particular moment in time. But yes, so, let's see, that is the game business, I already talked about the lighting, you saw plenty of that, I suppose I might as well turn it off at this point, it is not... We are no longer in a situation where it is super meaningful. There we are. Very nice and easy, easy way of turning it on and off by just <laughs> making the, the scene that I use for this white or not. But anyway. Um, where was I? So yeah, lighting. The dynamic lighting is good. Oh yeah, another thing. On the, on the, in a similar vein. Not quite the same thing, but I also set it up so I can have a little bit of a shadow, give sort of a rim light effect, which is nice. I might play around with this a little bit. I didn't use it during the dynamic lighting because I didn't want it to impact it too much. You wouldn't have seen the effect as much anyway. But yes, where was I? Oh yeah, dynamic lighting. That's why I was talking about this. Yeah, dynamic lighting is nice. I don't know how much uh, use I'm going to get out of it in the immediate future. I'm not going to be playing a whole, whole lot of games that have a whole, whole lot of lighting changes. But it could be, it could be nice to use it. And yeah, I guess I mostly sort of think of it as something that I would do in a game where, you know, the lighting changes from low to high a lot and there's a lot of very vibrant colors which is why I chose uh, Deep Rock Galactic specifically as a game to play for testing it. But, you know, it's an effect that can work in all sorts of games, and so I might just, you know, experiment around with it, see how it works for different different types of games, see how I enjoy it. But yeah, so that is the lighting talk. I already talked about video games, the game business, now again, I hope to stream more in the not-too-distant future, but also in the slightly more distant not-too-distant future. I'll be out of town for two weeks. So, we've only got about one week of potentially streaming more before I go to two weeks of not streaming at all. So, it is what it is. That's it. Yes. So I suppose that is the basically everything that needs to be gone over. Again, the schedule is not set in stone, so I don't have anything to announce for the week to come. Uh, next Thursday, I should be back with Chefs playing some more VA11 Hall A Cyberpunk Bartender action. But one way or the other, there will be at least one stream next week, just like there has been at least one stream this week. Yes, I can, I can, as much as it is within my power, I will ensure that there is at least one stream every week. Yeah. I will try to make it two, or perhaps even three. But beyond that is a little bit of a is a little bit uncertain at this point in time. Because there's a, still a lot of things that I am trying to focus more time on. A lot of things I am trying to uh, 
work on in my personal life that I you know, want to have more time and energy. I guess more so than anything, it's the energy. I have a fair amount of time, but I, only, I have far less energy to devote to these sorts of things. So, anyway, at this point I'm rambling a fair amount. So, once again, next week, 8.30 p.m. Central Time, roughly, we should be seeing some more BA11 Hall A with our good friend Shep Sheps. We'll be attempting to aim for more than more than one stream next week, possibly even three, depending on how the mood strikes me. After that, there will be two weeks of no streams, and then after that, we should be back to at least one stream a week. And I can't say a whole lot more than that with certainty. So, let us get a raid underway as per usual. I guess, I guess I don't always do a raid after a test stream, but, you know, no reason not to, I suppose. Um, let's see who is online. There we are, finish loading. Alright, I think, tonight I think I will go and visit Danny Don Show. I have not seen Danny Don Show in a very, very long time. Yeah, I'm playing some Elder Scrolls Oblivion, it looks like. Or at least uh, according to the stream category. Yes. So, before we get the raid underway, I think I'm going to start putting the customary raid message, which is, as always, we have arrived. I'm going to start putting that before the raid starts, just so that I can make sure that I have time for it. It might help if I spell raid properly. Yeah, so Danny Donchell. I guess I don't have all... I don't remember uh, <laughs> all that much about them, I'm sorry to say. It has been a very long time since I've seen his stream. But, uh, yeah, I remember I've, en I've enjoyed a few streams from this from this fellow, but I've only got so much time. So, that is, that is the unfortunate reality. But yeah, so, all of that said... Okay, we can't raid uh, at this time, apparently. So never mind. <laughs> Alright. So, let's see who else is online. Hmm. Alright. Uh, okay. Here we are. Let's see. Let's hope that this person allows me to raid. And if not... We'll just close things up, I think. Alright, it is follower-subscriber-only chat, but at least a raid is a raid, and I will accept that much. So, I'm going to raid Ryder Captain Rain. Yeah, I think I raided them last time or the time before, which is why I was not... They weren't my first option. But, uh... You know, I like to try to spread out my raids as much as I can. But, uh, anyway. What else is there to say? I guess that's about, that's about it. Nothing, nothing particular more to say. So, thank you all for being here tonight. I hope that you've had a fine night. I hope that you will continue to have a fine night every night. And I hope that you'll be well until the next time I see you. Thank you all very much, and farewell. Let us get this raid underway.